Good morning, everyone. It is always beautiful to gather, even though through social media, but at least we gather around the altar. And today, the fifth Sunday of Easter, we come together once again to proclaim that Christ is risen. As we are about to begin Mass today, first and foremost, I wish uh, to thank you for being here today, for being with us and celebrating the Eucharist with us. But I also take this opportunity on behalf of the whole parish to extend to all mothers, grandmothers, we always make a list, foster mothers, stepmothers, godmothers, everyone who's been and played a motherly role to anyone, a very blessed and holy and happy Mother's Day. Certainly this Mass, as we do every year, we dedicate in thanksgiving to all mothers and for the repose of mothers and grandmothers who have left this world and are now rejoicing with our Heavenly Mother and in the glory of the saints. Today also I wish to uh, <clears throat> express congratulations to Joe and Chris Swarnack. Uh, Joe and Chris are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary on this day. And so we congratulate them and we thank them. Joe and Chris have been uh, parishioners of St. Patrick for many years and have played a number of roles as uh, ushers, members of the um, Knights of Columbus, uh, members of the Finance Council, uh, CWL member, a number of uh, Eucharistic minister, and many times responding to any need that was presented to them. And as I thank them and congratulate them, I wish to take this opportunity also to thank all ministers in our community, all volunteers, people that continue to give examples and strength of their faith and commitment in serving the community. I'd also like to um, say a word about our teachers as we conclude the, uh, the week of Catholic education. Never until this week have I heard so many parents and grandparents express their love for teachers. They say now that our kids are with us all the time, we know what the poor teachers go through. And so that's, I think, a beautiful way of expressing gratitude. So not only to the teachers in our school communities of the parish, but to all teachers. And the one thing I was thinking also the other day, you know, when we celebrate baptism, there is a blessing, special blessing given to the um, parents of the child being baptized, saying that uh, you are the first and most important teachers of your child in the ways of the faith. And so parents, thank you for being also good teachers. And also at the baptism, at the anointing, we proclaim that through baptism in Jesus, with Jesus, we have become priests, prophets, and kings. And it's amazing how uh, these weeks, these months, we see parents and families fulfilling all these roles. And so thank you for continuing to make your church, your home rather, the domestic church. And for making your church, your family, your home. And so with all these uh, signs of gratitude, um, we begin our Eucharist in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Mindful of the great mercy of God, let us express our gratitude, our thanksgiving. And as God is merciful to us, let us also express love, compassion, and forgiveness to one another. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, 
Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you have pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, brothers, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a convert of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, The number of disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
dalla prima lettera di San Pietro Apostolo. Carissimi, avvicinandovi al Signore, pietra viva, rifiutata dagli uomini, ma scelta e preziosa davanti a Dio, quali pietre vive siete costruiti anche voi come edificio spirituale per un sacerdozio santo e per offrire sacrifici spirituali graditi a Dio mediante Gesù Cristo. Si legge infatti nella scrittura «Ecco, io pongo in Sion una pietra d'angolo, scelta, preziosa, e chi crede in essa non resterà deluso». Onore dunque a voi che credete, ma per quelli che non credono, la pietra che i costruttori hanno scartato è diventata pietra d'angolo e sasso d'inciampo, pietra di scandalo. Essi vi inciampano perché non obbediscono alla parola, a questo erano destinati. Voi invece siete stirpe eletta, sacerdozio regale, nazione santa, popolo che Dio si è acquistato perché proclami le opere ammirevoli di Lui, che vi ha chiamato dalle tenebre alla sua luce meravigliosa. Parola di Dio. Rendiamo Rendiamo grazie grazie a a Dio. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, Would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. Cristo è risorto. Christos anesti. I'm glad you still remember that. And I'm glad you remember we're still celebrating Easter until and including the Feast of Pentecost. And so some may ask if we're still celebrating Easter, why was the gospel reading today? taken from John's Gospel at the Last Supper. We need to remember one very important fact, that the Gospels were all written in the light of Easter. And yes, we can say that beginning from the infancy narratives, there is a light of Easter in every chapter, in every verse of the Gospels. But this is Easter and we're still proclaiming, of course, in a special way, the Alleluia. I received a wonderful um, text this week and then followed up with a little video of a young child in our parish. I don't think he's older than a year and a half. So he's beginning to say a few words. So Roseanne, you'll be happy to hear this, that while the family was watching the Mass, praying with us, the Mass last Sunday, the child sang Alleluia. And uh, it was more than perfect. You know, the mother said, I don't know if it's a perfect way. I said, are you kidding? I think we should all sing it like that. Not only with the, uh, the, the voice of the child, but with the heart of a child. Catherine Doherty of Madonna House in Cumbermere once wrote a beautiful little prayer. She said, Lord, grant me the heart of a child and the awesome courage to live according to it. What a wonderful gift. I wanted to share just two simple thoughts with you today. And one comes from the very beginning of today's gospel. And I've had occasions, of course, to share this on a number of times because I find it so beautiful. When Jesus says to his disciples, um, they know that something is happening, something that will bring fear and turmoil among them. And Jesus simply said, do not let your hearts be troubled. And Jesus has said this several times in the gospel. We find dice and similar words, basically the expression most often found is, be not afraid. And there was uh, once a, um, a, a friend of mine, a Baptist minister, who shared something that I have never forgotten. And he said that he was aware of a study that was done where a scholar wanted to see in the Bible from the beginning to the end how many times this expression came up, like be not afraid or do not let your hearts be troubled, which is the same thing. And a number of times was um, uh, he went through the scriptures to prove that the expression came up 365 times. And especially these days, I think it's important to know that. 365 times. In other words, no matter when, whenever we get up in the morning, 
we can hear those words every single day of the year, 365 times. And how important that is, especially now. You know, we've talked over and over again in the last uh, several weeks how the Gospels are really good news. Not only good, but they're new. Good news. And it seems like these words were written for us going through what we are going through at this time in our life. It's good news. Every day we can get up and realize we have no need to be afraid. God is with us. Jesus is with us. And he promised it in the text that we just heard. A few years back, I was celebrating Mass in a high school. It was not our local high school here. It was in Etobicoke, actually. And uh, the, uh, the students and staff was all there. And I mentioned this. I said, you know, in the Bible, we read 365 times that we should not be afraid. And there was a grade 12 young lady sitting in the front row that said to me, what happens on a leap year? And I said, you're on your own, so be careful. But whether it's leap year, any time, we can be certain that God is with us. And simply because God is with us, we do not, not need to be afraid. You know, thinking of Mother's Day and thinking of a little infant, when a child is upset, crying, hungry, being held in the loving arms of a mother or father removes every fear. And that's how we need to be, um, to experience God's love these days. God is with us. We may not have answers, so many times I've been being asked, and these days when I, I'm celebrating funerals, that question come up, comes up many times. Why? There was a, a lady just um, two days ago when I celebrated her daughter's funeral. I don't like to use the word celebrate, but yes, it's a celebration of our faith because we know that the risen Christ is with us. And uh, she was sitting right next to the casket. And before we left, she goes, Father, one question. I knew already. Why? And I said, there isn't an answer. And that's a big question. I said, I know one day when we are with God, we will know. But right now, just realize this. God is holding you. And God is holding your daughter. We know that God is with us. It was the promise Jesus made. And then as the text of today's gospel ends, Jesus says, you, each one of us, can do great things as well if you do them in my name. And that is the mission all of us are given these days. We can do great things. They don't have to be big things. It can just be making a call to someone who's alone. It can just be a prayer, an extra prayer. It can just be a word of kindness. These are great things. These are great things. So we pray. We pray that the Lord continue to be with us and that we experience his presence. He is with us. That we may experience his presence. It's beautiful to see all these photographs that you've sent and that I'm sure you'll be able to see through the camera today. And there's so many, just before I left uh, the house today, uh, there must have been, oh, at least 20 or 30 more that they were being printed um, on the fax machine. And they, these will be added as well as over the next few days. Uh, it's beautiful to see. And like, uh, if I, as I look at every single picture, everyone is smiling. Everyone. Even little infants. Um, and that's the joy. The joy that is in our hearts. So today, maybe with these pictures, I even feel your presence more around the table of the Lord. And so let us look at visible signs in our homes that God is there. But more than any signs we see on a wall, across a picture, let us make of ourselves the most important sign of God's presence. Nel Vangelo di oggi Gesù ci ha invitato a non aver paura. E questo è l'augurio, la, la forza che la Chiesa ci invita a vivere in questo tempo, ad avere la fiducia che Dio è con noi a vedere le, le, foto, le fotografie che avete mandato 
eh, che avrete modo di vedere tramite il, la, la camera fra poco, il video, eh, posso vedere tutti con un sorriso. E il sorriso è il sorriso che viene dal cuore, un sorriso che abbiamo vissuto, che continuiamo a, a vivere adesso e che senza dubbio un giorno incontrando gli amici, famiglie e parenti, ancora una volta continueremo a condividere. Nel frattempo un semplice di nuovo augurio a tutte le mamme in questa giornata dedicata a loro. La Santa Messa oggi viene dedicata come preghiera per le nostre mamme e in suffragio delle mamme, delle nonne che non sono più con noi, ma che sono state accolte nel Regno dei Cieli. Sia lodato Gesù Cristo. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us once again present to our Heavenly Father our prayer, the prayer that has been handed over to us and that many, many communities are offering during these days and these weeks the prayer for the pandemic. A prayer to combat the coronavirus pandemic. Most merciful and triune God, we come to you in our weakness, we come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors, give understanding to scientists, Endow caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill. Protect those who are most at risk. Give comfort to those who have lost a loved one. Welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities. Unite us in our compassion. Remove all fear from our hearts. And fill us with confidence in your care. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, Jesus, I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Amen. Let us also add a Hail Mary today um, before we, and as we prepare to bring the gifts to our God. In honor of our mothers, we will say the Hail Mary and then followed by the eternal rest for deceased mothers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Ave o Maria, piena di grazia, il Signore è con te. Tu sei benedetta fra le donne, benedetto è il frutto del tuo seno, Gesù. Santa Maria, Madre di Dio, prega per noi peccatori, adesso e nell'ora della nostra morte. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them, may they rest in peace. L'eterno riposo dona loro, Signore, e splenda ad essi la luce perpetua, riposino in pace. Amen.
pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il nostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio Padre Onnipotente. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment. In the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, He showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, proclaim together the unending hymn of your glory, as together we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Patrick, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
At this time, those who are not able to receive Holy Communion sacramentally may make an act of spiritual communion with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things <clears throat> and desire to receive you into my soul. <clears throat> Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Gesù mio, credo che sei realmente presente nel Santissimo Sacramento dell'Altare. Ti amo sopra ogni cosa e ti desidero nell'anima mia. Poiché ora non posso riceverti sacramentalmente, vieni almeno spiritualmente nel mio povero cuore. Come già venuto io ti abbraccio e tutto mi unisco a te, non permettere che mi abbia mai a separare da te. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. And before the final blessing, let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. San Michele Arcangelo, difendici nella lotta. Sii nostro aiuto contro la cattiveria e le insidie del demonio. Che Dio eserciti il suo dominio su di lui. Supplichevoli ti preghiamo. Tu che sei il principe della milizia celeste, con la forza divina rinchiudi nell'inferno Satana e gli altri spiriti maligni che girano il mondo per portare le anime alla dannazione. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Regina Celi Letare, Alleluia. Qui acque meruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deo. Alleluia. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Prega per noi, Santa Madre di Dio. Il Signore sia con voi. Ci benedica Dio Onipotente, il Padre, il Figlio e lo Spirito Santo. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. And once again, thank you for joining us in this prayer in the Eucharist. Once again, happy Mother's Day to all mothers. And over the next few days, you will be receiving an animated phone call from the parish simply to bring you greetings to your homes. So this will be done, of course, only with the phone numbers that we have of registered families, but even if you're not registered and you are with us here in spirit, do receive my greetings and my prayers every single day. Vi ringrazio per la vostra partecipazione, ancora una volta auguri a tutte le mamme, 
e questi giorni avrete una telefonata dalla parrocchia, è registrata, comunque andrà a tutte le case i cui telefoni noi abbiamo, anche coloro che non abbiamo i vostri telefoni, sappiate che la nostra preghiera vi è sempre vicina. Grazie e sia lodato Gesù Cristo.